Welcome to episode 103, the Robots and Balloons, aka Eric Deniston episode. Greg, I gotta tell you, like today, hey man, I'm so excited for this episode. One, we're getting the feature premiere today, which is out on Spotify and on other major uh, streaming platforms. The new Robots and Balloons song, Feel Alive. You've heard it. I've heard it. Probably one of their best songs this year. It's the fourth song to come out since 2019 um, on the platforms. And Eric is just killing it as an artist and as Robots and Balloons. What um, did you feel? What did you get from this? Because I felt like there was a ton of nuggets from from Eric. I mean, you know, yeah, in man, this interview, uh, it kind of resonates with 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 our messages. And it just you know, for you to have him on the show is like. First off, I mean, guys, we're we're just starting this show, and and Mike has relationships with some really great artists and and entrepreneurs, and uh, we call I like to call them musicpreneurs that are doing it, man. Um, and this guy is uh, no joke. He's uh, very talented. Um, he has a, a a label as well. He started with um his partner, um, Red Umbrella Records, and like he's putting out his own stuff. And yeah, but Josh Josh Igloo Monroy, man, who's who's gonna probably be on the show in the next few months, and I can't wait for that episode because man, his acumen in the music business is pretty pretty fierce on point yeah these guys live it and breathe it so i know everybody you know we go to work or you have your full-time job and whatever but if you're an artist and you really want to push this they're doing it in ways that are still allowing you to be able to have your job and allow to still do this at, at some you know at, at scale this on the side as a side hustle and then literally replace your full-time income by doing this type of thing now we're not talking about getting rich overnight these guys put in the hustle they're in the industry they're you know eric worked at um this uh what was a can you tell me worked at the village recording studio and you know did went through the real the real protocol and struggle of being an engineer which i super appreciate because i don't think enough guys these days and also the industry's changed to the point where that's not continually necessary but he's like He's he's new school of an old school tradition. Let's just say, and that's that's what we take from this show. We have the the old school men, um, you know, melding with the new school, and we're we're pumped to have them. So, yeah, definitely. So this is episode one hundred and three, Robots and Balloons, aka Eric Deniston. Great to have you here. It's uh, we, you know, we. I I miss you so much, dude. I don't think I've miss seen you too. You since my birthday. Oh shit! It's your birth. Wait, what? No, no, I haven't seen you since. My oh, birthday. since your birthday, I was like, yeah. Hey, didn't you just have a birthday? Yeah. Yeah, I'm having a second one. It's the it's the <laughs> five month anniversary. From like, last Why month. not? Hey, nice. Why not? Yeah. So it's it's been a minute, man. So um, so catch me up. Like, what's been going on with the R and B crew, and what you've been working on as a producer, and how um, well, going during quarantine. They're good, you know. The first month was was pretty slow getting back into things. Um, I think like after that initial sort of depression kicked out, because you know, I mean, I'm I'm lucky enough to that you know I'm here with Josh as well. So sure, um, it's nice having a roommate um, during the quarantine. Makes it a little bit easier, especially since we make music together and whatnot. But we both definitely you know lost a lot of inspiration just in the first month just not knowing what's what's happening i mean the thing is is that um with our record label and like our artists you know we were we were this close to like actually starting to do live shows which is right like next big step to creating a career out of your artistry um and obviously the pandemic hit and josh and i you know we've so far we've been really good at like predicting exactly how this whole thing was going to go um but um yeah i mean it's just it was depressing because we you know we had all these plans that were supposed to start in may you know i had my first show in may and um obviously canceled and not knowing what the future holds like i feel like 2020 you know you're not going to see any concerts until no, at least the end of 2020 and, and that's assuming that there's not another surge and you know and mm-hmm. and whatnot so just like the the whole the you know, and that's that's eighty percent of an artist's income. Like, if you're thinking of you know playing like totally really like nice shows, so we were just thinking like, holy crap! Like, if this world is changing, what's you know what's going to happen to artists and, and whatnot? Um, so basically, I've tried to sort of channel that energy into mm-hmm. um, since I haven't been super inspired to to write, um, I've been really just like researching huge into like marketing um like for our artists uh, sure getting getting really used to that uh, we're also curating playlists now 
Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, doing really well. We just we our our pop playlist is number four in the world on Spotify right now. So so let's 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 touch on that real quick. So yeah. let's talk about the curating of a playlist. So our last episode with David Shaw, or actually two episodes with David Shaw from Rebel Heart Entertainment. He's been a, a promotion radio guy for years and. Sure. Um, went to Columbia, you know, uh, records. It was his original job working tertiary markets and then eventually worked himself up to work, you know, break like the Beyonce's of the world and the mm-hmm. chains and the systems of a down and, and all that stuff. What are you guys seeing on an independent level as an artist when you are curating those playlists? What's the impression rate like? Is it something that's a slow burn over time? I mean, it really, it, it really depends. Something that happens much quicker. Well, it depends. I mean, the way, okay, so the way that we're doing it, I'm sorry, excuse me one second. Sorry. Yeah, no problem, dude. Take your time. Uh, so basically, is that fan too loud? No, you're no. fine, dude. Okay, good. That's what filters uh, are for. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, it's interesting. So basically, the way that we're doing it is it's a little more, a little less, I don't know, a little more disingenuous, I guess. It's not, we're not creating a playlist and then, um, you know, promoting it, filling it up with songs that we're passionate about. You know what I mean? Like we're literally creating a playlist uh, um, for the ability to be able to put other independent artists on it and drive streams and, you know, and work them. So that's, that's sort of like the, the playlist curation world now, you know, if you own a big playlist with a lot of people listening to it, obviously you're going to be able to drive a lot of streams to, to certain artists. Mm -hmm. Um, So, so uh yeah it's 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 honestly the there is like a formula to it that i uh, you know i mean can't just like reveal the formula but um uh it just it really depends on how much money you put into it so sure advertising you know um it's advertising across instagram across facebook um and depending on how much how many dollars we're putting in per day um it really like drives up our our likes more and this one you know like our first playlist this is just our first one and and, you know we're by no means making any money off of it or anything yet um but uh uh we've got you know something like 26 2700 likes since like the end of march so Mm -hmm. um we couldn't go as quickly as we wanted to because of budget constraints and not you know i mean we had to shut down our studio and and whatnot. Sure. So, so but yeah but it's been a really interesting experience just like understanding that you know since we run the label um you know we want to be able to promote our artists without bringing in a third party you know we want to be like a one-stop shop for our artists i guess yeah That's, no totally that Let's definitely ask, helps sure when, uh, when it comes to um our viewers and who's watching the you know um people like myself and yourself uh that don't really know where to start budget wise um what do you think is a good number for um you know campaigns for curating playlists and such well for curating playlists like i mean you can spend anywhere from four to sixteen dollars a day you know and that's like when you're actually going to see something another thing that i have been experimenting with actually more more on the artist side of things is is you know running ad campaigns like that are directly feeding people to my instagram or or to a link fire um page with the song on it and link this is fire. something say what link fire link fire yeah so link fire what link fire is is like if you were to release a song mm-hmm. um and then you have it streaming across all platforms right yeah. and you want to mm-hmm. put a link to it in a uh, link to that song in your in your bio on instagram yep. um you would create a link fire because what that does is you click the link fire and then it'll say play this on spotify play this on apple music play this on like deezer link like link tree like link it's exactly like link tree yeah and, and it'll track you know i mean it tracks all the clicks it tracks who's going to which platform it's a great way to just like uh build up data dollars are doing the best that right exactly yeah it shows you cities and then and then you can translate that data into how you run your ads you know sure. Um, and, and I've seen such a, like, in, I mean, uh, just my following on Instagram has gone up like a thousand people in, in less than two months, you know, just by running $4 a day. Well, you know what, you know, it's amazing. I, I, I noticed today because I was getting in the mood for the, for the podcast is I was listening to the current songs on, um, on, uh-huh. on Spotify for, for robots and balloons. And, you know, I'm, 
I, I remember when by myself got released. I remember looking at the first few days about how many thousands of clicks it got. And now I see how it's like getting even more and we're hovering towards the hundred thousand mark on all three songs that have been released. Mm-hmm. It's amazing kind of how your star has risen in that respect. Thanks, and it's really been done, you know, and I got to give credit to Josh as well because red umbrella is your guy's creation as far as a label label goes. Mm-hmm. But you know, the thing is, is like, do you like the slow and steady wins the race or would you like to be more scalable where it's just like, boom, boom, boom. So my question really is, is do you like the, would you rather have a slow and steady career where it lasts longer? Or would you like to have the rate of attrition where you're gone in two, three years? (laughs) (laughs) Which is probably, which is probably pretty self-explanatory. I get what you're saying though. Um, Well, I mean, now there's definitely been times where I'm like, like, man, could this just like happen now? You know? Yeah. Like, geez, all you know, all it takes is one. Like, I just need one, you know. I just need one, bro. One single, bro. The other thing, too, is I'm not, you know, I'm not like super young, you know. Um, I'm, I'm not, it's not like I'm here in my early 20s, you know, starting my career in LA. And, you know, we know how that goes. And, um, so, so slow and steady has sort of just been my, <laughs> been the way that I've run things in, in general, but I've definitely, you know, there's definitely been times where I've been like, Oh man, like I just wish I could just have one that would just set things off, you know? Um, but at the same time, it's, it's, I will say that because we, you know, I, I took meetings with like Geffen and Interscope and I remember, and I, you know, that was like a b- big, huge thing. And I was really excited about it. And, you know, we ended up staying independent, but, um, the, the, what you get with the slow and steady side is just like so much more knowledge, you know? And, and I think it's easier to protect, it's easier for me to protect myself. Um, because I don't have, because I'm not, I don't have a, a business behind me breathing down my neck or whispering things in my ears, you know, no shareholders. I, I don't exactly. I don't have a label trying to tell me what my music should sound like. Uh, oh. I'm forced to protect myself, you know? Um, which I think is is been one of the greatest parts of the slow and steady. I think amazing. It, I, um, let me let me tap into that really quick. So, you know, if I get you correctly, to reiterate, is kind of like this situation that everybody's going through had an effect on musicians, original artists, businesses in in so many different ways in the way you handle the situation and and literally like have to pivot your business model, right? Um, and I think you should give yourself a. I think that you should feel really good about what you have been doing because you've actually adjusted really well, um, and then putting your time and focus into building your platforms. And I think people who are listening to this can can learn. Hey, man, you know what? What can I focus on right now that I already have out? Work on something new. Uh, build that up, but like be able to just build those platforms and that following up and. And, and not only that, I'm going to kind of go back before COVID uh, even hit, w- you know, the setup of releasing a new single or EP or new, you know, a new song, a new track comes out, you know, that seems to be really pivotal in the fact that if you don't set it up correctly and you don't have any kind of tidbits coming out beforehand, little trailers, little teasers, when it does come out, and this is what happens with a lot of people, even me, um, nothing happens at all. And then... You know, you're sitting there, you're like scratching your head. It's like, this is really good. Why doesn't anybody like it? And I know why people don't like it because it's not set up correctly. So what did you do um, with your music to set it up correctly? So organically at, at the at the first level, organically, that when you did release it, it had more momentum. So before you put adverts into it, it had a good start to begin with. And I think that's really pivot, a, a really important piece of information our viewers and listeners would like to hear about because... This happens to mostly every artist. They just put things out, and they don't even care about how they put it out, and nothing ever happens. They build it, and they will come. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I know exactly because I have had uh, actually releases in the past, you know, years ago and stuff that, you know, it was great songs, and we would release it, and nothing would happen, and it's like, what the heck? Like, this is such good music, you know? Like, why wouldn't this this take off? But you're right. I mean, it it come. See, that's the thing is like. The writing and the music is 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 awesome and it's fun, but it's seriously like maybe thirty percent of the actual being an artist, um, especially when you're trying to be independent. 
there's so much more and nowadays everything is changing and there's not there's a new platform every day that you have to like add yourself on and do some dumb shitty dance in front of a camera so people yeah. listen to your song it's like <laughs> it, that 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 whole tiktok thing i still can't wrap my head around but, you, know, you know it's 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 funny um my my girlfriend yeah so that's a whole other story we'll talk about this later <laughs> my new girlfriend um she her son is so into tiktok i i just i don't get it i downloaded it just to see what it was all about it's like a and fat. I'm like, i mean it's just like it's so fucking annoying i'm sorry but it is it is annoying but, but you have to adapt. but it's a great but you have to adapt you and, have to adapt yeah I, I, it, it was sort of, you know, and it first came out, like, I, I got it for, like, the little kids and and whatnot. Like, I understand, like, they, you know, they want to just do their thing and dance in front of the camera. But then, like, I started seeing adults on it and I was just like, what is this? <laughs> is this so oh, no, okay? No, no, no. Is this? this. Fuck. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, like, going back to, to what you were asking, so so the process uh, of, of releasing. So we're again like i'm learning new things every release um but the way that i i usually start out and i'll just give it to you like cut and dry like uh, we have so we have like a one sheet that we give each of our artists and it has a list of you know i think it's like 60 different video videos that we need you know one including like a, a static shot of the album artwork with the music playing underneath it that you can throw up on something you know you got to cut it into 14 set, you know, cut it down into three 14 second, second clips seconds. for the Instagram story, you know, just like a bunch of format things. Um, we'll also do, I, so one of the things that I found um, was just like really fun to do as well is just kind of creating little 30 second, almost like music videos, but you don't have to do some big production. It's like taking, wow. taking the camera and, you know, I got the song Vera about being lost in Los Angeles with a, uh, love it great prostitute but yeah and but so you know i had uh i had my my friend videotape me like sitting at a bus stop you know not videotape tape but you know uh when, when, um, sitting at a bus stop and i'm just kind of like you know i it wasn't even like you know there's no prostitutes walking up to me or anything but it was just so simple and i just had the song playing in the background you know and then the bus drives by and then i'm not there or something we just cut it up you know to look like that and uh that other song i'll be fine is very kind of like a an anxious song for me so i i created a little video of of i was in the bathroom and the lights flickering and i'm just like kind of yeah you know going having a panic attack like little that's, things like that Go and, ahead. That's, and that's the one thing i notice about your music is like not that not that everybody's music isn't personal or doesn't explain some sort of human element to it, but yours, like, dude, you listen to by myself and like, you feel that shit. Oh, thanks, like, man. it's like you, you, I mean, literally the Great. verbal razor blades you pull out and get down <laughs> to the situation with is like, to me person, and it's always been what it's been attracted, attractive to me to your music and to you as a producer is, you know, this very like visceral, yeah, it's a pop song, but dude, I'm talking about some real shit here. Like some, yeah, so, you know, and it's yeah, my I've, personal I've, experience. Always, like, you know, and I've been called selfish. See, I'm, I'm I'm like the type of person like I'll have a girlfriend, and I'll just blatantly, obviously, you know, write songs about you know maybe like a fight we had or whatever, and and but that's relatable, dude, yeah. and that resonates with people. Exactly, yeah, and I, that's why I always like. I don't know if like I'll ever have a relationship that really like lasts, lasts, lasts because I can't help myself. Like I always end up writing <laughs> a sort of song that just like you know. Is, yeah, but if the girl doesn't it's understand that that that's what inspires you, then she shouldn't yeah. be with you in the first place, right? Yeah, yeah, no, totally. You're totally right, and I, you know, I, I say that more just like as a humorous thing, but like, um, I, I'm like, uh, yeah, that that's always been. I've I've always been attracted to music that was like raw and sad and like honestly it's so hard for me to write a happy song and if i do it usually ends up sounding somber or something so you write what you feel man and i think let's yeah. tap into that for a second we'll tap into what mike said one as a listener um in hearing your music and how it resonates with him right mm -hmm. and then how you're able to hone in on these little mm -hmm. capture these little moments in time that 
are not a big deal and have to be a big production and that you mm -hmm. just you could this is what our viewers i want and listeners want you to really hone in here on like what he's saying he's capturing he's taking his day and he's just documenting certain parts of his day that resonate with the songs that he's he's creating and all he's doing is capturing 30 second clips and what that does and you just release that that resonates so much more with people and then you engage them and then now you have them now they're going to be tuning in to what you're putting out so i think this this the value here is guys there's never a moment in the day that you don't have 30 seconds to just capture something that you're feeling that when you're a creator yeah. it doesn't matter yeah. what you're creating but let's just say songs at this point that you can actually tap into and capture and then put out as content you know instead of thinking oh man i gotta have this whole elaborate setup fuck that when you make it complicated in your head is when you slow yourself down, you know? And, and I think but, one thing that, that it, especially the pandemics helped me with is just cause you know, we have so much time on our hands. It's like, I just realized how, how complicated I was making everything feel in my head and like how, you know, I'd wake up and I'd think like, Oh, I need, oh, man, I need more content. And then I'm just thinking like, Oh, Oh, what am I going to do for content? And I got to edit this video. It's like, no, you know, take your, your camera and get like a cool little eight millimeter filter and i have for feel alive this new song i'm i'm doing sort of just this campaign of just like nature shots you know like like just stuff that's alive and like flowing in the wind and it's it's just these like beautiful shots of flowers and and whatnot awesome. They're just kind of going like this and you hear the song in the background and i mean that's <laughs> that's a piece of content that's enough to create an ad that could drive you another twenty thousand followers whatever there it is folks like, there it is. is like it really it's just i mean and at some point it seems like you're just kind of regurgitating things and throwing it out and you might be but like you just need to keep the attention of the, of the viewer and and i mean think about an artist like artists when they paint it's not like they're gonna not ever paint another scene of a hill because they already did did one right right, right. No, sure. gonna, of that you can make a hundred scenes of that hill so if you you know if you find one one little maybe clip that you create that you really like i mean you can do it so many different ways and just spread it out across your 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 title I love it. Can I mean, we, yeah. We can we go back to um, what we were talking about before, and the fact that you know um, I'm a I'm an artist myself. I have a band. Um, we had a lot of shows booked and planned because we came out with our EP. Not that we put it out correctly, but you know we still had a good amount of shows booked, and they were yeah. good shows. Um, so you know the the depression of that setting in. It's just a bummer. But it, you know I got over the depression part, and I'm like you know what. You know, here's a silver lining. What if we can ju just pivot this and then start doing some live performances, right? And ca on on, on and via uh, Jam Kazam or um, online broadcasting network uh, that that web uh, website that you can do that on. Yep. And and that would happen is the resistance with my band is we're so used to going into a studio and just getting in the room that it. I'm the first one that took the initiative to get everything I need. I talked to Mike because he's very, he knows all the shit about what you need. So mm -hmm. like started investing in myself and being like, okay, now I Sometimes. can start recording drums. I could start doing this myself. I could start jamming online. So it pushed me out of my comfort zone, but now I'm getting my band. They're finally getting on board to be able to actually start jamming virtually. And if you look at Erica Badu, she actually, this is a perfect example, man. She had a concert. She started in her room, right, in her kitchen, and then she hired, her band performed. It, they put a dollar, you know, it's a dollar to be part of this moment. This live, they're going to capture this live event, and why would people want to be part of that? They can watch live events on anywhere. Well, they want to be part of something, right? right so if they want to yeah. be part of something, they want to live in that moment with you, they paid a dollar. She made over $100,000 on her first. The second one, she, she, she went to a venue, empty, and then the band actually came in, and they did an event there. She charged $2 for that. And she made, I think, over $400,000. And then now she is on her third concert, and she charged $3 to be part of that event. Now, why would anybody want to be part of that event? Because you're the reason why they want to be part of that event. All that back work that you're doing, that's not really work. It's just capturing those moments in time have built you up to the point where now people want to see you. And now, instead of going out and spending gas money and not getting paid what you're really worth and, and all the all the operational expenses it, caused, it takes to set up a concert and do all that shit you can just actually do it for pretty much nothing anymore so the the, the it mitigates any type of 
uh, of financial risk, which really you would have taken anyway because this is what you do and you, you do what you do because you love it. But at the same time, there's so much more actual benefits now than the, the more pros than actual cons if you actually look at it. Yeah, you're bummed out because you can't do it live in front of people. You'll get there. But right now, if you just pivot that and all that content that you're putting out and do a live event and you do something like that and say a donation for a dollar or pay a dollar, yeah, I yeah. guarantee you, you fucking, you'll, you will make more money than you ever have having a real concert live. Right, right, right. That's crazy. Yeah, no production costs. That's really, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, especially now that the quality is, I mean, the quality of the streaming, you know, live is, is better too. And as long as you have the ability to make it sound like that, mm-hmm. that's great. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, everybody's adapting. I mean, shit, you got to. I need to, I, I've, I've done a couple little live videos, but nothing like with like actual live, you know. Right. Um, I can see you doing that though. And all the, all the things that you're doing, I bet you any, I bet you, I bet you fucking a hundred bucks. If you put a little button there, a dollar, you'll, and it's not to make money, man. It's not to make money. It's Thanks literally to, 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 yeah. blend, to make it feel yeah. like part of that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, and then get opt in with an email address, right? Opt in with your email address. Now you get their email address. So all that traffic that you're targeting, now you're targeting, now you're capturing that. And now you can pay, you can actually market to that. And right. Be- right. And no, exactly. Yeah. That was cool. Ah, yeah. very smart. <laughs> well, I'm in mar- I'm marketing actually by day. That's my day job. But oh, really? Oh, okay, cool. I, I have a lot. I have a lot to implement due to being in a band. But at the same time, it's like you know exactly what to do. It's like you just got to convince three other guys to do it too. So yeah, yeah. When you think yourself, you're talking to guys like yourself that are having running a label, right? Yeah. That are actually doing it, and they're they're putting it. So you're an inspiration to me, right? right? And Mike, of course, but at the same point, it's like, it just like motivates me. So I'm going to get off this podcast and I'm going to start working on that because this is why we want you on here. Because when you speak to people that are in our situation um, or they're just starting out, they get overwhelmed. They don't know where to start. Right, right, right. And it brings me back to a question. Let, let's let say the guy that's just getting into music and, and just doing, you know, wants to get his message out there. What's something that you could say to that that person to to really make it, you know, make them feel not overwhelmed and, and you know, and just yeah. be able to be inspired to start out? Yeah, I mean, I, I would like the, 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 the thing that's always helped me out in life, and this is like even, you know, I mean, before music and stuff is to like, honestly, to write things down. Like my, I need a list in front of me. I need like, I need a, a, a damn near saying like 9 a.m., you know, you, you're getting on this call with so-and-so. 10 a.m., you're fixing your album cover, you know, 11 a.m., you're, you're walking your ass to the park and taking some video you know, I need it. I need it listed out because then it, that's the only way to keep it practical. Like that's it's the only way. practical plan. It, exactly. Like I, yeah. and then that way too, I mean, if you got to push something, if you got to bump something on the list, cause something takes a little bit longer, that's okay. Like you have the ability to do that. It's, that it's, list it's, like it, makes it real. It makes it real. And then it also, it causes you to be a little harder on yourself. You know, if you don't actually, I mean, if you look at it and you go, well, well shit, I was supposed to do that from three to six, but I just completely sat on my ass and didn't do anything. I mean, you're going to end up pushing yourself to exactly. Um, yeah. It's, it, it's so interesting. Like during pandemic, like, I mean, you know, we, we've been talking on and off yeah. I and mean, like, mm-hmm. I got back to writing music. Yeah. It yeah. Became, became a pretty fruitful thing. And, you know, now I'm like sitting around and it's like, all right, I got to do, I, I mean, I basically, our listeners don't know i have like three jobs at the moment i have the podcast i have my day job which is i'm a financial advisor and then i literally work on another project that me and greg have that will roll out in january so you know the thing is is my days are full i literally sat here before the podcast about a half hour before and literally found myself with free time I'm like all right there's something i gotta be doing right now <laughs> <laughs> Holding like, yourself accountable. Yeah, holding myself accountable. I'm like, there's got to be something. Is it clean the house? Is it? Yeah. It's a great state of mind to be in, though, because but, listen, but it's a state productive. of alertness, and yeah. I've gotten so much done because of it. 
Yeah, and I understand yeah. your point yourself. about, you know, keeping you're it looking in on yourself and you're like, okay, what am I not doing or that I need to do? Like, it's always like one thing that's going to push the cog right. to make the machine go forward that much more. And, yeah, and, and I think, and the, cons- sorry, and the consistency, no, 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 no. consistency is, is key because oh. when you're consistent, like it's crazy. It pounds. Uh, I'll catch myself in a week where, cause I, I mean, I work in music, you know, I haven't had a job in 10 years. Like that's I, inspirational. <laughs> I haven't had a job in 10 years. We're going to touch on that in a second. Music. And, and, you know, I'm not, but I definitely haven't been rich the whole time or anything, you know, like it's been, uh, it's, it's been up and down, but, but, um, uh, what was I getting at? Where was I going? Uh, we're, talk- we're, we're talking about just being able to be productive and, and, uh, Oh yeah. So it's really easy when you're, when you're in a job, when you're, especially when you're a freelancer, like, I mean, I mean, you're your own boss. So like, obviously like you can have downtime when you want downtime. Um, it's just, it's really easy to do that. So, but, but once you, once you put yourself in some downtime, it can easily become a habit. And I feel like you're all more down and you're staying consistent. You know, it's insane what you can complete in a week, as opposed to if you're just, you know, kind of like doing things here and there when you really feel like they need to be done, you know, let me ask you a question. This is something Mike and I are very passionate about too, and and it, it goes back to exactly what we're talking about. It's really your mindset, right? And it's it's being in in control of the thoughts that you allow to give emotion to, mm-hmm. that will literally uh, either paralyze you from from getting in your own way and actually doing something productive. Like I like I said the other day, I was like I looked at my drum set and I'm sitting there. I'm like, I'm like, why aren't I playing that right now? I'm, I can watch Netflix or I could go play that. Go fucking play the drums. I never got to play drums when I was little. Now I have my own place. I could play my own drums. I have a studio. There's nothing I shouldn't be doing right now but that. And yeah. it puts things in perspective because you can really get in your own way, right? And just like, oh, yeah, I'll do that later. I'll do it. Your mind is never going to be for the benefit of you. It's going to always take the easy way out unless you're above or outside that thought. So my question to you is, is there any type of people that you, uh, you know, books you read or, um, you know, people that you follow, personal development and, and type of to have the mindset you have to be able to do what you do on your terms? Um, I would say less less of, of outside. I, I, a lot of the people that I surround myself with, I think, uh, is where I can really, like, grab like a minded. lot of inspiration from. Yeah, I mean, my business partner, Josh, he's a he's an extremely talented producer. Um Sure is. Uh, and he's very like, I mean, he's, he's, he's just kind of like a no bullshit kind of dude and, um, wow. definitely not a lazy guy, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of like, I think having people like that around me, I don't want to be the, I don't want to be the, the last person to do something in my group of friends, you know, I don't no. want, I don't want to be, or colleagues, you know, I, I don't want, I want to be up there at the top and i'm not by example trying to be better than than the people around me but it's but in a way like i am you know? i think you're right dude you're right yeah, it's, it's, it's starting it with that. Us- the five people that you're most like are the people that you surround yourself that's the consciousness of you that's yeah. a that, that's a, that's a fact yeah. so that's the most important thing right there I, I can read books all day but if i surround myself with people that are not well, in the mindset i'm at they can just completely hinder me. And from- I mean, it, it absolutely ups your game. And I mean, you know, Eric knows me even outside the podcast and stuff. And he knows me from a business point of view. It's like, I don't deal with bullshit people. Yeah. I yeah. don't want to deal with bullshit people. You know? And how do you weed out the ones that are you already fucking, in your life that I mean, are bullshit? This is what you do. You cut them the fuck off. <laughs> but it's your mom. <laughs> but it's don't your care. Mom. Yeah. I've come close a few times. <laughs> like the other day, he was on the phone with his mom. I'm gonna say this again. I don't care. He's on the phone with his mom, and she's like, "It's some little thing that he's like, just click the button that I sent." And he was like, "Eradicate all the baby boomers, God, please." <laughs> oh no, but Eric. Er- Eric's any- seen those tamper tantrums. So funny. funny. So fun. yeah, but brings me back to brings us back to what we're talking about. It's like if you want you, you want your goal, your goals, right? Are your goals, but 
your goals are really um, solidified when you really surround your people with you surround yourself with people that are in line with those goals, and you're you're vibrating on a frequency that is in line with hertz. A, a manifesting those goals because now everybody's on board. It's that much more powerful when you have that many people on board. Whereas most people are for themselves, and I don't know about you, but it, I do know about you now based on what you said. But like everybody I am in a band with or whatever, they have jobs, so I understand that. But when they get back from work. They're tired, and they all I hear is, I'm tired, I had work. And it's like, okay, so you walked in the room and you said you're tired, and I understand that, but at what point do you let that go and stop letting it affect what you really love to do? Because you see, when you say that, that weight of those words basically give validation for you just giving everything over to the man instead of what you really are awesome at and what you should be saying, you know, pushing yourself that much more. It's not easy to do. If you have the ability to be in your own, in your situation... That's a blessing, and it's still not. It's still just as easy to to go on that downtime that you were just saying, and let that just be like, oh, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. It's so yep. easy to do that, right? Yep. But the fact that you take the initiative that you take is 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 again. I'm gonna say, and I'm not trying to be redundant, but it's it's inspirational. Um, in the fact that you took something and made it into something great, and you took your passion and you were able to you're able to do what you do with it. Now, the people that work and come into this after work, they just I think they have to find the time and actually commit to it. And push themselves above and beyond what they're doing in the eight hours of a day that they're they're already doing. Yeah. Um, so I mean, can you can you speak to those people? I, th I think bit? like a lot of that is. I mean, because now when I say that I haven't had a job, I mean I still worked. I, I had a for five years. I worked at a studio called the for five years. Five years. Four yeah, years. About five years. You worked at the village. Um, right? that, yeah, the village recorder, and you know, I mean, that was a a typical. You know, f well, it was like fifty to sixty hour work weeks, depending on what kind of sessions were going on and, uh -huh. and i mean we were working with like elton john i was working with carol king was like my first client you know like it was wow. one of those studios it was amazing um, amazing um but uh but yeah i mean it was a job at the end of the day you know and and i this was back in like 2010 or 11 um but you know i'd come home exhausted and and not yeah, but did you love that exhaustion though because like I, I remember when i was an assistant i i lived for that i did love it i did love it i remember I, like when i worked on the misfits box set and i met like danzig and stuff i was like oh my <laughs> god there's danzig and there's the misfits i was supposed yeah, to open for the guitar player for danzig one of the shows that got canceled what's, what's his name yeah. the, the vegan what's, oh i don't the know vegan? he's the shredded dude he shredded oh, he anyway. a, yeah but yeah they're fucking oh awesome. john christ yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah, it's, no, it's, no, it's fun on. experiences. It's nice, you know, 50 Cent letting you rev his Lamborghini and whatever. It, <laughs> that kind of stuff is like, yeah, it's like something to live for. But but still, like, there, there was that underlining thing. Like, I always, you know, knew what I really wanted to do. And back then, I, I didn't think that being an artist w was necessarily, like, a, a career choice that I wanted yet. So, so let's, let's, let's touch on that real quick. So... Yeah. You know, I, when I met you originally through our, our good friend, Danilo Lambeau, mm -hmm. um, was when you guys were opening the studio in Hollywood, and, and since then you guys have moved to a bigger, better facility. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the one thing I've always felt about you guys, whether it's you and Josh collectively or Studio One Zero or, or, or whatever it might be, um, you know, there's always been this family vibe. There's always been this, you know, hey, come and hang oh, out. Great. There's no pretension with mm -hmm. what you guys do, which I think really kind of crystallizes in what you guys write and everything that you guys put your, kind of your thumbprint or stamp up on. Mm -hmm. Do you guys really feel that? Like, where did that kind of come from? Because I know you were Josh's assistant yeah. at one point, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. He, he came in uh, to work. I don't know. We had like a bar. I think it was like for Mattel. It was like a Barbie session was the first session we had. And I, I was, his, I was his assistant at the village. Um, he was, he came in as an outside hired engineer. Um, and then we got put on a session that was 40 days and 40 nights long, like through Christmas and everything. And wow. um, yeah. And every day. And I think we had like one day off. Um, so that's when, when we really bonded. Um, uh, awesome. But yeah. So he, he and I like, you know, then from there I went to went to run a, a an R, this R&B singer Tank, um, his studio Tank. out in North Hollywood. I I wanted Tank, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Shit. Um, 
basically, like Josh knew what I wanted. He knew that I wanted to like get out from under the man a bit, and I loved working at the village. But it did take up a lot of my time, you know, and and it opened up the doors for you. Yeah, it was when you work at like a big studio like that. You can only go so high, you know. Mm-hmm. Before you kind of cap out an uh, engineer. I mean, and then you're, and then I feel like the at least the old school way and sort of new school, I'm sure too. It, is that you're you're just waiting for that one artist or producer to come in, swoop you up, and take you to bigger, better things. You know, um, yeah, that's, so, I mean, that's used to be the traditional model. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. Now you know, nowadays, I mean, there's so much home studio stuff going on. It's sort of tough to get discovered that way. But I mean, if you're working in a big studio, I can't say for the last two months, but like you know, there's a lot of opportunities that'll present themselves, and you'll find something. Like product of being there, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, just just be being a known face to everybody that's walking through that door and, and oh yeah i mean I, I i make sure the I, coffee's hot you know make, oh, make sure the fridge is you, full, if you but, can't make a good cup of coffee you're fired i mean that, I, I mean honestly, that's the way it is it's, it's insane how what? important it is for to, for bagels and coffee to be <laughs> in, a, in a room yeah, the bagels better be warm and the coffee better be stiff you know? here's another yeah. thing here's another thing we discussed the other day with uh, dave uh not being a dick Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> if, if there's a job anywhere that that you really can't be a dick about, it, it's being an assistant. Yeah, like I've watched so many people. Like, see you later. Yeah, but there's Your certain, job is- there's certain audio recording schools nowadays. Not when I went to them. Yeah. that give this impression that you're an engineer when you leave here because you spent thirty <laughs> or forty grand on an education. Exactly. And I'm sorry. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the guy who goes to audio school A, B, and C because I'm not going to call people out. But, um, or you go, or you learn at home on your own, like young Greg over here is doing. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is that you really don't learn unless it's hands on, and you don't learn unless you're watching from people who are better than you. And this is and, this is coming from somebody who went to audio engineer school. Yeah, this goes, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but also, but also, I went through all these steps yeah. protocol wise. Yeah, sure and did. so did Eric. And yeah. that was the, ultimately that's what I loved about Eric was is there were too many guys coming into the scene in LA yeah who were who didn't go through the system yeah didn't go through the protocol of being and I feel like your guys Shortcut. well I mean just feel like their stuff in general though and and not to kiss your guys ass too much but like I really feel like that's where you guys shine well, because there's so well hold on a second listen. there's so many people in a sea of sea of 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 saturation you know what do you think may, has made you guys stick out because to me i mean obviously of, of all bias uh, excluded mm. you know i i put on a robots and balloons record and i listen to stuff that's similar in the genre that might pop up on spotify and to me is it's head and shoulders above absolutely yeah. oh, thanks you Agreed. know I mean, is that just innate talent? Do you think that's how you guys do it? Uh, it no, process? I think it's. I think it's. Uh, I think it's the 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 way that Josh and I like like to run things was sort of just like the way that we were to each other, and that's like I wanted people to come into that studio, whether it's coming in as like an intern or as an artist, and realize that like at any time they can, within reason, walk through that door and feel like they're at home. You know. Yeah. Um, and I think it created like a huge community, which was really awesome, which, which in turn brought in a lot of really, re- really talented kids. And um, I don't know if you knew this, Mike, but we were also, um, there's a, a school called Recording, uh, Recording and Film Connection. Okay. Uh, and basically, so the school has been, I think it's been around since like the 60s, but what they do is they, instead of having classrooms, they put students into actual studios with engineers producers whatnot right and they learn firsthand by being basically like an intern and then they get you know face face thank god with the That's producer. Great. and it's great it's it's really really cool um uh, it brought in a lot of amazing talent um it's, you know one off the top of my head is, is Cy, the the guy who produced like most of the ep that i have coming out yep. um yeah, uh, he goes by Cy. Worked with an artist that i brought you which was evan as well right evan yep, evan yep. right Evan Wright, yeah, and and it it 
it was great that we did it that it we did it did cause a lot of problems some people got a little too comfortable just yeah. showing up whenever you know if we'd have like right. a, your a-list right. client in there and people just think they can walk through the door you know um but it, it, it brought, brought us all this it, this this amazing talent and and it gave me the ability to explore my sound more because I had all these kids coming in who were super interested in working on, on my music cause they like my voice or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. and it was just, it, it was really easy to kind of hone in on what I actually wanted my sound to be because I had, I'm so- going through that struggle right now. Like, yeah. And everybody comes at you kind of like, you know, uh, at least for me right now and not to sound like, Oh, everybody wants to work with me, but like, it's almost like I was talking to a friend of mine about this morning. It's like, it's almost very disjointing in the sense that they're like, Oh, let me play this on it for you. Let me play this on you. You don't know whether it's like good or if they're mm-hmm. saying you kind of suck, let me help you out. Yeah. And it's, it, it's always like, I, I feel like that's like the delicate With collabor- it, there, collaboration thing. Not turning your records into like hip hop records where there's like 20 writers Right, five percent. You know, there's this weird thing in L.A. where you can't show somebody a song without them just assuming that that means that you want their opinion on it. You know what I mean? Like (laughs) exactly. Like, hey, listen, guy, thanks. This is actually the final mix, but like, yeah, we appreciate that you wanted to throw your verse on. You know, you you know what you really (laughs) should do. You know what you really should do. That's always that's yeah line that comes out. It's like, dude, this is hey, done. Man, oh, I just wanted you to hear it. And like, hey, bro, you know what you really should do? It's like, I don't no, I don't anything. know what I should really should do. And you should just shut up. <laughs> yeah, dude, and, and, and listen, there's too many cooks in the kitchen as there, as it is to make yeah. this get done yeah. in the first place and get, you know, make sure that it comes out well. I'm yeah. just showing yeah. you, right? And if I showed you before I released it and asked your opinion, then fucking give it. But otherwise, <laughs> just shut the fuck up, listen, and either you like it or you don't. And that's it. <laughs> exactly. You know? Or make your own song. And then you, you don't go to Picasso after he's done a painting and say, "Hey, you know what I would have done to this?" Right, you're right. You know? You're right. Totally. <laughs> people, people. Well, you know, I mean, it's it's good and bad. It's just annoying sometimes. Yeah. But but then I again, just, I just think I just think people. everyone's. I think everyone just thinks they have access to everyone else because of Instagram. It's like, oh, you know what? Mm-hmm. Let me type my opinion in because it really counts. Yeah, yeah, I'm a guru because I'm on these platforms too. It's like, no, man, I you fucking worked really hard on this song, and like, it's not even that you worked hard on it. It's like you already put it, vetted it out to where you where it is right now. It is what it is. So it's like, yeah, you know, don't even fucking say anything if you. I don't need. I don't need your opinion. Yeah, and, and I, it come from people that aren't even qualified to give them. That's that's where it's like, okay. This Thanks. actually, this actually is a good segue for a studio etiquette. We could talk about that because, if, if yeah, let's get into that. You know, and uh, if you guys want to become uh, uh, engineer, producer, an artist by way of an engineer or producer, like you really need to learn when your opinion is allowed i want to say like if you're in the room, <laughs> you know like there's there's just certain times i i guess what we what we'd always tell our students and this is like this is how we survived this industry it's it's honestly like just be seen and not heard like sit down on the couch listen if you have an opinion or you have a question or something save, save it for when the artist isn't in there and also the and also ask. ask fly on the wall ask yeah fly on the wall just just like you know, and and be, don't publicly embarrass people. It's dumb. Be careful and don't give. You just don't give your opinion on the music unless you're being paid to be to in your the session. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Oh, that's that's it right there. So it's like, hey, you're an intern. You want to come in on the session? Fine. You can't walk into every single single session I have, but these are the ones you're allowed to walk into. Sit there mm-hmm. on like a fly on the wall. If you have anything to say. Just save it till fucking. Save life. it till afterwards, and then and then just just understand your role. Like that's all. And once you're once stay you're, in your lane. Yeah, once you're able to really understand. I mean, people respect that. Like that's who yeah. they want around. Like I want. I was that kid that was. Sad. I mean, you know, I'd make my I'd friends and know when I need to like you know say hi even to the artist. I mean, at the village, every artist was an A-lister, so it was like you had to be careful. We had some artists that you couldn't look them in the eyes. That was like one of their things and which is retarded, but like, and, and it's thing. <laughs> but it's a thing. And, and you just needed to know when, and, and they'll notice you, you don't need to make yourself notice. They'll notice you if you're doing things right. And I think that we have in, in school, we're taught this too, like, like, you know, show initiative and, 
and mm -hmm. be, show your value. And, and I do agree with that, but you need to take that with a grain of salt because if you do it the wrong way, it could cost you your career. And, and, and I'm talking, goes. I'm talking about if you cut, I mean, I was at a studio where if you cut the bagel the wrong way, it, it would cost you your career. Like you you were out of that. Studio. And that's, and that's the system I came out of was, you know, in, 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 and why, when I was an engineer full time and when I was a producer full time, I was so militant about how we did records because the thing was, is like, and Greg can speak to this, you know, is that, yeah, you sure can because I correct your time. I corrected your timing. Like I whipped your ass in the shape. So, um, but you know, the thing was, is like, you know, drummer had to play to a click. There were so many dudes floating around in the, in the middle 90s, late 90s, just going, oh, I'm sorry. There's only one guy I know, and I'll shout him out right now, and he'll be probably pretty embarrassed, but it's my buddy Roy Mayorga from Stone Sour is the only guy I know in recent years who's played a whole album without a click track. Hmm. It's crazy. And he's good enough to do so, right? And he's good so enough to do so because of the hours of practice. Correct. So, so, but the thing, my point being is, is that, you know, coming out of that system of being militantly put into, you know, every day, this is what we do. This is when you make the coffee again, bagel being cut the right way, dude. It's the little details that if you can't do those while no one's looking, how the hell are you going to put a big session together when you got people fucking yelling at you? If you can't do coffee the little on you because it's not the right type of coffee or cup, which yeah. I've had happen to me. Um, <laughs> Um, and you know, and, and those kinds of things, like, when are you going to, you know, like if you can't do the small shit and the basic, basic things, how are you going to do the big things? Period. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Very good. So, I think that's it. You know, whole, you know, there's, again, it's, it's comes down to, you're going into it either ha whatever you're doing, whatever you're passionate about, you're either going into it haphazardly and you're just going through the movements to say you did something to make yourself feel better, or you're actually paying attention to every detail that you're doing to the point where maybe it's over, 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 you know, like it's, it's just too much, but you, at least you're giving yourself, you're holding it, yourself accountable for these little actions that, you know what, my ba that bagel is not cut correctly. Let me just take it back and let me cut it better. The fact that you even care about that means that will carry over into everything you do. So I think that's really important here. What we're talking about is hold yourself accountable no one to speak. It's not easy. You want to fucking. You're all excited. Instead of reacting, respond. Stay neutral. Hold your hold yourself for a second. Think about what you're going to say. Write it down later. Take what you have to yeah. do here and take these little things that are unless, you're unless it's a situation where you're going to erase a whole whole two inch tape or something like that, which doesn't happen anymore, or a whole hard drive is going to get wiped out. Then then jump I saw, in. I saw the intern put the put the master i can't remember what artist it was but the master tape on top of one of the speakers yeah yeah i know i definitely remember the artist but yeah um <laughs> i know the story so yeah uh was there some scary some scary things that happened? i know i mean you always hear about the guy who like aligned the tape machine in the 70s and now he's selling shoes you know because <laughs> when he did when he did the record cal he wiped the whole thing out you know yeah like, yeah Happened. You know, because he answered the phone while he was doing the record, Cal. Like, there's always that <laughs> that, that like urban studio legend of yeah, the guy yeah. who's now selling shoes. And we're and obviously word travels fast when you do fuck up. Like, you don't you might not have that a second chance because that everybody's gonna look at you. I mean, I was glad I, I was small glad I came out of the New York studio scene, man. I was glad I came out of it because there was a certain standard, high standard mm -hmm. that was set, or you got your ass kicked. Like, well, I like that you your ass standard. Kicked. You got to have standards, man, and you shouldn't be in there if you don't have standards. You know, when I see people post anyway stuff in gym pictures and, like, it's like you've been to the gym for one fucking day. Don't post a fucking pic. I go to the gym. I haven't been to the gym as, as much as I should be, but I hold myself same, accountable same. for it. But at the same point, you'll never see me post pictures of myself or say I'm checking in the gym because it's just something I live by. Nobody needs to know that that's what I do. Uh, you know what I mean? It's just like, you know what? Okay. And, and then my friends talk about it and they never go to the gym and then they go once and they're like, yeah, so I worked out. I'm like, do you feel better about yourself? They're like, yeah. I'm like, okay, so now do it for a while. And then yeah. don't tell me you're doing it. And then tell me you've been going to the gym for two months. Then I'll be like, Whoa. I, I, would, I would say all crazy. three of us have the 10,000 hours at this point in our, in our respective crafts, but you know, yeah. Go ahead. Were you going to say that, Eric? Uh, I was just saying, and then they'll correct you on your form. 
Mm-hmm. Oh god! Right, 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 right. For right. Like two days. Yeah, Who there's this guy it? that tried oh. to tell me how to deadlift once. I was deadlifting; it was like 400 pounds, and he came over. He's like, "Dude, uh, don't slam the weight." I'm like, "You fucking fat fuck! You come here and <laughs> this fucking thing up, and then tell me how it sounds when you put it back on the ground." There's, I'm not slamming it on the ground; it's just gravity. Hey, it's, buddy. It's, hey buddy, there's a box of ho hos with your like fucking it. name on it. I love people like that. Is gravity even real? No, I don't know, but still, it's, <laughs> it's a box of ho hos with your name Here, on it, bro. It can't, can't can't make any any less noise than that. Go my crush him. Go crush him. Yeah. Go crush him. So, yeah, um, man. Hey, it's, it's, it's standards. Standards. Yeah, definitely standards. So, uh, e. So you know. You know, I, I appreciate you being here, man. But, you know, let's kind of get one question in to kind of close this out. It's been an amazing interview. Um, this is one I really feel, or actually it's probably, it's a two thing, uh, twofold thing. What, you know, what do you feel like is the major thing that artists aren't doing to stand out? One and two is, is, you know, have you seen a really, you know, I know you guys have gotten some syncs in the past with commercials and stuff like that with balloons and some other things you guys have done. You know, are you seeing the drop off of syncs? Is it harder to get or is it is it easier to get with less money coming back to you essentially? Well, I know that uh, as far as syncs go, I know that they're, ha- you know, I mean, I think like the certain networks like i know i think mtv for example you know will offer gratis aren't they offer a uh i don't know i'm not sure but will offer up a sync for you know 1200 bucks or something for like one of those shows which is like nothing um i know that you know josh has a publishing deal with with um sony atv um and i know that sony actually won't they won't even sign off on anything under a certain amount of money just to want to devalue the the yeah, well, they're they're keeping the standard up. I mean, I know a lot of people at Sony TV who won't get mentioned on this podcast who are friends of yeah. mine, and those conversations I've had with certain people have been, you know, I tried to license a Thirty Seconds to Mars song a few years ago for a sneaker commercial, and the budget comparatively to what the company made was hilarious. I mean, they That's wanted they they wanted Kings and Queens by Thirty Seconds to Mars, and they were going to offer like 20 grand for like in perpetuity basically. Wow. Huh. And I said, do you understand like at broadcast, they get 300,000 for a week for that song probably. Yeah. And it's I was insulting. right. I mean, it was way more than that. I'm not going to disclose what it was, but you know, the thing is, is I told them in the beginning, it's like, and then they just like fought with me. Like, Oh, it can't be that. Won't they take 15 grand and like all this just for industrial. I'm like, no, that song's worth a certain catalog. And that was Sony ATV. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I just, I kind of look at that and I, and I appreciate that in one way, but then also I, you know, do you see where Sony won't budge? Do you see someone like yourself can actually slip in that lane? I mean, it depends. It just really depends um, on what the offer is for. I personally, I haven't, you know, I haven't had, uh, I mean, we've had maybe a few sinks in the past six years, but we haven't really been like pushing for them. Yeah. Um I think Josh just had like a Grey's Anatomy sink or something. I and they know. paid like a good amount of money. I think that one was upwards of like fifteen maybe. But Sounds um good, right? yeah, I, I I mean I'm not sure exactly how it's changing. I mean I'm I, I'm to assume that the feature film industry is gonna have a big change after this pandemic uh happens. I don't imagine that there's gonna be a lot of movie theaters opening up considering that they were barely staying afloat in the first place, you know. It's a good uh, prediction. It's a it's a good observation. So yeah, we- you know, that and malls. I'm not sure what the malls are gonna do with it. But um uh yeah, I don't I you know, um I, I feel like uh there's a lot more opportunity with Netflix and, and whatnot going on. There's, I feel like there's so many great new shows coming out, you know, I mean, I'm sure that it's not going to change too much. Um, I'm not sure what budgets are going to look like though. Yeah. You have to know somebody from net, obviously like how does somebody that thinks their music's good enough to qualify for a show on, on those platforms, get in touch with all taste. Um, we have, yeah. And then there's, there's certain like sync agents basically. And so we have guys who send us specs, um, on a fairly regular basis. It's been really slow lately. There's nothing in production right now, you know? Um, yeah. So there's nothing. I mean, there is, but who, yeah, there's just not a lot of stuff, but yeah, so basically, they'll, they'll send you a, a sheet, like a one sheet saying, you know, 
um, Suicide Squad is coming out, and there's a scene where the Joker and Harley Quinn, you know, start hooking up or whatever. Scissoring. <laughs> no, I remember seeing those, man. Like when I worked at EMI Music Publishing, yeah, they would send around the songwriter the songwriter uh, vetting forms essentially is what they were. There were these spreadsheets that would come out every quarter of projects that were coming up from film and TV and from artists who were looking for songs. Mm -hmm. And it would be like Beyonce looking for this, write something similar to this. This is what they're looking for. And everybody would, you know, in those companies would just throw songs at it and hopefully one would stick. Yeah. So if I'm an artist, though, how do you get in touch with those people? How do you, how do you find, I guess it's just with searching and like, I know you're in the industry, so it makes it easier. But for somebody that's not, that wants to get into it, how would they get in touch with the right people that would allow them to even submit a song in the first place? I would, I would just start looking at, I mean, Google's the greatest thing in the world. And I think like a lot of the reasons why people are slow too is just because they don't really take the time to research. And I think that there's, you can probably look up, licensing and sync agencies very yeah. easy and start submitting um and honestly it's just consistency like you know just keep sending new stuff to these people and then one day they'll bite like you know be be you yep. know be crazy about it push forward and and i think that that's that's uh that's probably the best way to do it is that's to great advice. It because once you find one agent who can who can you know you know, they make money. Yeah. They take like twenty five percent off the top. So like they're yeah. once they find a song that a network likes, like they're gonna come back to you, and they're gonna and then you're not gonna have to be searching for these guys. You're just gonna start getting specs sent to to you like we do, you know. And and you know back when we were focused on syncs, like it was great. It was, there was a lot of cool music being made for them and stuff. I think we just kind of have fallen off of it since we started the label a bit. Sonically, um, the caliber of what you're recording and submitting it's uh you know since there's a lot of artists doing home studio stuff um is there a criteria or a vetting process for that like it has to be a certain hertz or the uh the eq or like the mix like how did i mean know? you want it to be mixed i would i would say always put your best foot forward they're not going to want to hear like a rough mix of anything i think that the the my my advice to obviously my advice to most artists is to pay for your mixes um, I do understand that like $350 to $500 is not an easy thing to, to dig up, but there are a lot of, of awesome up and coming engineers that you can find on Instagram and stuff. We do mix mm -hmm. for, for dirt cheap, you know, like, um, or just give it to uh, Mike. Yeah. Or just <laughs> give it to Mike. <clears throat> but um yeah i mean that that's my my main thing is just like make sure that it's mixed and mastered you know and and make sure that it sounds great because they're not going to put anything on television that doesn't you know especially now it's like you know say 20 years ago even you know pro tools hadn't really met the you know consumer market and you know i feel like you know it's not like i feel like i know that Development as an artist all comes from you at this point, whether it's mixing, whether it's mastering, whether it's anything it brings to do it with full it. circle. Yeah, because they don't want to develop artists anymore. And they used to be. It, these it brings this conversation it's full not circle. Here anymore. Yeah, it brings, yeah. It, full it brings the conversation full circle. I think that the thing that we can wrap up here and just, just totally all agree on, which we've agreed on so far, is fucking initiative and, mm -hmm. and, and literally holding yourself accountable Definitely. And to standards that you know you're capable of of living up to and that you don't fucking let yourself not live up to and when yeah. you don't live up to it you know to say to yourself mm, i should probably be fucking doing it. so um so let's do this um eric this is your time the next two three minutes let's talk about feel alive um and, and show out you got a new single coming out on spotify and other streaming platforms like soundcloud and stuff like that uh, on June nineteenth, and it's the latest in the robots and balloons armory of songs. Man, what was what's the song about? How did it come about? Like all that stuff, and um, play out play out this episode for, of it. This song, as as well, this is sort of a, a this is like my probably my favorite song on the on the EP that's coming out. And it's definitely about sort of a push pull relationship between me and um, a girl and um it's sort of uh like an angry love song um 
the verses, you know, I, I, I sort of start talking like about the whole push pull process that we're going through. And then in the, in the chorus, I'm saying, um, Ooh, I'm waiting for you to make me feel alive, you know? Uh, oh, yeah. so it's sort of like, it's weird because the way that I'm, I'm speaking and I kind of like to do this a lot. Like I, I do a lot of blaming of myself, you know, I, um and whatnot but but That's so it, the verses are very kind of it almost seems like i'm like angry and not for it and then the chorus it it hits to like the like ooh, i'm waiting for you to make me feel alive so it's sort of just like a love confession i would say <laughs> it's well, hard for me to awesome. explain it without hearing and i've watched i've watched your star rise over the past five years man and so so yeah. super proud of you of what you've done dude as a friend and and, Thanks, and colleague and stuff like that so uh Thanks. We're gonna play. We're gonna play out the end of this episode. And also, man, thank you for being on the show. It was thank really, you very really, much. Really, really eye opening for our Thanks listeners. For having me, like yeah, that. yeah, it was really. And fun. so uh, this, this, you know, today is the day that Feel Alive drops, June nineteenth. Um, and here it is, Feel Alive. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Sweet, yo, one hundred and three. I mean, just fierce, just fierce. And you guys are about to hear I Feel Alive, like, here in a minute on the outro. But, like... It's amazing. Amazing. It is. I mean, the guy is just, you know, to me, like, not to kiss his ass because he's a friend of mine, but, like, and, you know, a, a close associate of mine in a lot of ways. Like, we've done business together and stuff like that. But, you know, he literally just gets it man like the visceral like i was saying in the interview the question i asked him about being visceral visceral in what you do and passionate about what you do you know he's the true form of an artist where he's reporting on what he's seeing it's yeah for got, better for better or for worse in a lot of ways i well, think from what know, he said in the interview you gotta you gotta fail right dude i mean if you want to win you gotta fail and there's a lot of that going on when when you're doing you're pushing something um to market right and he's you know it's a lot of test a and b test what's working what's not working and he's doing all that and he has a, a really good regiment and if you're gonna love the fact what he does man it's it's awesome he sticks to a schedule so he actually puts himself account he holds himself accountable for not putting out his content yeah and, and then when he does do his adverts because of putting himself on that regiment to put out content his ads do so much better because of all that back work. So, I mean, what, is, what does that really tell you? And not only that, man, like what I was really impressed with, just being outside of you, I don't even know him. I, I just got met him, and he, he was a pleasure to speak with. Awesome guy. But my opinion of what he does to, to a two-chord song, like, that, you know what I mean? Like, that's just amazing, bro. Like, he made that yeah. song. Like, he gave it all the peaks and valleys it needed, and there was two chords going underneath it the whole time. So, and you know what, man? Cool. Let's, let, let's, let's, let's stop picasso style describing this with words and let's uh let's give the audience uh on the out here the uh the new track from robots and balloons which is out today yeah, yeah, let's see what on all major streaming platforms here is feel alive feel alive <laughs> You, I ain't got no fears and you pulled me over You're taking this is what you made me walk a mile for I could talk about it more but now you ain't got the time And I could be a fool for you So much, sometimes 
Fucking let you in, you stabbed me, then you took some more And now I'm walking down 